Well, looks like James Webb Space Telescope discovered yet another unusual galaxy. A galaxy that you can kind of see right here, that for the first time ever is showing us what's known as the Lyman Alpha Line, or basically a very specific emission of light produced at extremely far away distances when the universe was only about 330 million years old. But why exactly this galaxy is doing this, and why this light is visible, is basically this new mystery. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss why this is a mystery and what exactly this means, and at the same time, basically learn about a lot of these early galaxies and how they appear very different from any galaxy around us. But first, so what exactly is this Lyman Alpha Light, and why exactly is it important? Well, when it comes to very early galaxies, or essentially baby galaxies that just started forming, today we believe most of them were essentially what's known as Lyman Alpha emitters. Or they were basically emitting Lyman Alpha radiation from neutral hydrogen. And this is a very specific type of light, at approximately 121 nanometers in wavelength, that's produced when the electron inside the atom of hydrogen transitions from one state to another. And specifically this is caused by a neutral hydrogen that was pretty much everywhere in the early universe, transitioning into ionized hydrogen when something acts on it, such as for example very powerful light from various star forming regions. And so as a result, whenever we actually see this light coming from a galaxy, it usually implies at least two things. First, it means that this galaxy is located in the region with a lot of neutral hydrogen in the extremely early universe. And second of all, this galaxy seems to have a lot of star formation or some other means of producing powerful radiation, potentially containing some of the highest star forming regions in the early universe that are actively reionizing regions around this galaxy, literally showing us the process of reionization as predicted by modern cosmology. But when it comes to these Lyman Alpha emissions and these Lyman Alpha galaxies, this particular emission line has never been seen earlier than 550 million years after the Big Bang. And that's because despite being super energetic and containing a lot of emissions, when looking at super distant universe, there's just so much neutral hydrogen everywhere that even this light does not get through. And so in most cases, what we usually see are essentially galaxies usually missing a lot of frequencies of light. For example, there's another type of a star forming galaxy, known as the Lyman Bray galaxy, that will appear something like this. It's as if any photons that contain ultraviolet light, or even more energy, completely disappeared. And this is actually what it looks like if you were to look at this galaxy in different frequencies of light. Here's actually one example from JWST, a galaxy known as Uncover Z13. And this of course proves to us that this neutral hydrogen was pretty much everywhere for the first billion years and made a lot of galaxies appear very differently. But extremely distant energetic galaxies, especially the ones containing a lot of star formation, produced very powerful emissions that eventually got through and possibly even reionized the rest of the universe. But because we actually expect more and more neutral hydrogen to exist as we go back in time, we obviously don't expect to detect certain types of light at certain distances. But this time researchers discovered something they once again did not expect at all. Here we have the fifth most distant galaxy ever discovered that seems to definitely possess an extremely bright hydrogen emission line that should be otherwise invisible. And unlike previously discussed galaxies that usually contain this Lyman break, with basically emissions of hydrogen practically invisible, in this case we definitely have a galaxy where the hydrogen emission is visible at just 325 million years after the Big Bang. And in this case, it's seen as this really large line sticking out in all of the other wavelengths. And though at first it was not clear what exactly this shows us, because of the redshift, it was actually confirmed to be a hydrogen emission line of an extremely faraway galaxy. And once again, the reason this is unusual is because the universe was supposed to be opaque because of all of this neutral hydrogen. This line should not be visible. And so basically here, something in this galaxy is making all of these electrons drop down in energy and produce a photon of an extremely specific ultraviolet energy. And somehow all of this light got through this fog and reached planet Earth. And so detecting ultraviolet light at a redshift of 13 is currently not really easy to explain. Now the previous record holder was detected at a redshift of 7, so this is when the universe was about 600 million years old, 
but detecting it so early basically presents us with a new cosmological dilemma. The dilemma is so big that the scientists at first thought that maybe this was actually a mistake. This had to be confirmed several times, and we now have direct confirmation that this galaxy is indeed real and is indeed so bright at these very specific frequencies. One of the primary researchers, Kevin Hainline, posted this image showing us what they were able to observe. Out of 19 observations using 19 different frequencies, here we're only seeing this in shortest wavelengths. And that of course proves to us that there is a lot of neutral hydrogen here and it completely blocks certain types of light. But even though it's brighter at longer wavelengths, it's still able to produce this bizarre emission. Lyman alpha hydrogen emission line is unfortunately not visible in this image because it's actually right between two filters. And so even though there is no explanation for now, there are maybe some suggestions. Now the first and most exciting suggestion was that this was maybe the discovery of the mysterious population 3 stars, or basically the first stars in the entire universe. These stars would be very very unusual, very bright, very powerful, and potentially create so much brightness that it could maybe shine through everything. But it's unlikely to be the case because here we don't really see other predictions, such as for example specific observations from emissions of helium. And so because we also see emissions from carbon, oxygen, and a few other things, Right now this seems to be just a regular starburst galaxy. And because in this case the emissions themselves also seem to be slightly wider than usual, these broad emissions could be because of some kind of a really hot plasma or possibly some kind of a fast motion. So maybe things spinning around in the accretion disk or maybe a lot of motion of gas inside some kind of a very powerful star forming region. And so the only, I guess, not so satisfactory explanation right now is that this galaxy seems to be located inside some kind of a reionized bubble. The bubble that appeared extremely early on, as you see in this simulation, and produced a large volume around the galaxy that then somehow allowed this light to seep through to one day be visible from planet Earth. So essentially by being inside this unusual bubble, it prevented a lot of this light from being absorbed. But that's just one of the potential explanations, and right now there is really nothing else we have except that this is a super unusual galaxy. A galaxy that will probably help us explain reionization a lot better and help us understand the early universe a lot better as well. And so maybe reionization just happened a lot earlier in certain locations and produced somewhat unusual and somewhat unexpected shapes or volumes of space that allowed some of this light to seep through and to be visible through all of this unusual fog. And chances are, just like with other galaxies discovered by JWST, this mystery is going to be solved pretty quickly as well. As a matter of fact, we just recently covered several other mysteries already officially solved, such as the bizarre little red dots or little red dot galaxies that were also discovered by the same survey just over a year ago. And if you want to find out what these are, check out one of the videos in the description. And so until future discoveries, or until we actually come up with a conclusion and the explanation to this particular discovery, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.